And there's an extra scene unlocked. <laughs> I kind of want to see what that extra scene is now. <laughs> I mean, we got time. Let's see the Kickstarter backers scene. Can you believe this? Relegated to a scene in the extras. I didn't get... I didn't back the project for this. Calm down, we got a cameo in the main game, didn't we? For like literally two seconds, I wanted them to go deep into my life and backstory. What makes me tick? What makes me tick? What's my motivation? This is going to be one of those extra scenes. So this is going to be one of those extra scenes? Well, let's make the most of it. What's the story excuse for us to be in here anyway? We won a contest hosted by VSL. It includes an all expenses paid trip to the VSL finals and a voucher for a free day and a hot spring just outside of Seoul. Wait, give me that. What kind of pandering isn't in... That kind of pandering isn't in the budget. Besides, this isn't an otome ultimate game. Five out of seven characters are male, not including us or Mach. Are you sure about that? Well, it's certainly not a BL game, and that's a decent ratio for esports. Reva isn't brave enough to go outdoors, unless it's for StarCraft, which leaves us with Jet for OVA-style hijinks. Oh no. What hijinks? We hear hot springs. Oh no. We would die for sure. According to canon sources, she can throw a shot glass at 85 miles per hour. That's before the hydro hydralisk range buff too. Dangerous, very dangerous. Attempting a run, it, run by would be a mistake. Fine then, no hot springs. How are we going to spend our time then? There's plenty of things we can do. We can go to Seoul Tower, on a hike, to a K-pop concert. What's with that look? The budget. We can only go to places that are in the main story. Ugh, those cheap skates. Forget StarCraft. This is the actual dead game. Would you rather them ha have cut your expressions and poses down to pay for us to sightsee? Hmm, good point. I value my emotions. Then come on, let's go find something to do. Golden Zone Fire Lounge. Do PC bangs typically have lounge areas? I don't think so, but it would be too repetitive to only show the area with computers, don't you think? Also, the keyboard sound suggests an gets annoying after it for so long. I think sacrificing realism was a good trade-off. It says here that the team was originally supposed to hang out at a coffee shop. Pfft, <laughs> hipsters. A PC Bang Lounge is more fitting for a bunch of pro gamers, but they won't get to spend much time in here in the future since they'll be slaves of Jet t Jet's team house. The sequel will be very exciting. It will feature 20,000 StarCraft scenes, a dishwashing minigame, and a single match in the VSL round of 32. Try to avoid the wrist surgery bad ending. Please don't get people's hopes up like that. What? Don't tell me that... Don't tell me that there won't be a sequel. Hashtag broken promises. Oh, now everyone wants a sequel. It's probably too early to tell without knowing the reception. It also depends on whether or not the game goes on Steam. Well... Time Traveler Mark here. I think it might have. I think it might have. <laughs> oh, that explains the picture of the Pudge. Wait, one moment. Do you see that object on the table there? A reminder that cigarettes exist. No, now the game is going to be rated T for terrible. Terrible influences. <laughs> Well, it can't be helped. There's not much else to be said of this place, so let's continue. Before we go, there's an anecdote here. Do you remember how Jet asked us who Mach was by saying, name? That exact thing happened to the writer at the open bracket of a major tournament. I have a special note saying that says, Caliber is an S-rank bully. Please unfollow him on Twitter. Brutal. Hmm. Where to next? Wait, 
we can admire our surroundings a bit. Look at the Korean on the signs. Wow, amazing. I wonder who performed the incredible fast of coming up with the characters. There is a high likelihood that one of these signs has an error. Haha, <laughs> well, you know. And while we're on the topic of inaccuracies, Korean players are most often referred to by their real names instead of their handles, as in the typical Western scene. That one was intentional. Please, the team tried their best. Hey, would that coffee shop you mentioned have been a cafe latte? I would. I could go for a drink right now. A shame that we can't go inside. Look up. It appears that Onster has its own building in Seoul. Perhaps you can try there? Wow, the EG sponsorship must have paid off. I wonder who runs the office. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is this? Just as Kate Kaku. Just as Kate Kaku. <laughs> Sorry, that's racist. Just as Kate Kaku. Who knows? Well, let's go take a look at Stomping Grounds. We've been away from computers for too long as is. Gaming addiction is a very serious problem in South Korea. Be very careful with those jokes unless you want to go undergo shock therapy. Oh, street food. Are you guys hungry? Looks like a tornado potato, an intense food with the name to match. It would not surprise me to learn a, of a pro gamer with that as his handle. If we're going for realism, it would more be like tornado potato. <laughs> Maybe one is the team name and the other is the handle. There's a pro gamer who once had a tomato haircut. It was possibly the only hairstyle more gaudy than stunts. Google it. I'm serious. Oh my gosh. We will need to get a confirmation on that from StarCraft's official hair authority before passing judgment. Clearly, this background has weak material for jokes. We should escape it as soon as possible. Stomping Grounds, also known as the PC bang that stunts mom runs. He's the hero of the cafe until he's defeated and captured by Mach. Lucky for him, that isn't a ants game. I don't get it. Hero to a bunch of middle schoolers, at least. How old is Stun anyway? 16, but that makes him 15 by our standards. Korean age is slightly different. Hmm, something seems off. What is it? Why are they advertising for VSL? If it is just a little poster... If it was just a little poster, I would understand. But that thing is right on the cover, right covers the entire wall. Oh, it says here that it was originally the background for the qualifier area. You know, the opening shot where Mach whines about losing. But there was only one scene there, so they repurposed it to be a second PC bang. What? That's lazy. Hey, don't speak badly of my establishment. Ah, sorry, Mrs. Stunt. Oh my gosh. Hmm, do you think that there's a Mr. Stunt? If there is, he has a troubled relationship with his family. Maybe he's always overseas. Or maybe ju he's just a deadbeat. Oh, poor Stunt. No wonder why he's such a twerp. No male role models. He could have had a lot worse than the females on the female mock route if this was a certain type of doujin. It's unforgivable to play Protoss unless you're an elementary age kid, right? Ha ha ha. Protoss, how weak. Hush, eh? Really? <laughs> oh jeez. Please, this isn't one of those kind of games. Let's not go there. Hmm. I find this place more aesthetically appealing than Golden Zone Fire. Why couldn't Stomping Grounds have been the main cafe? Because then the game would be too dark. The story is about Starcraft, not Diablo. You have a point. In reality, most PC bangs are low like, like this. It helps ease eye strain and makes it easier to hide from your parents when you haven't returned home for four days. 
When you say it so matter-of-factly, I get the impression that you know from experience. Don't haze me. We must save our efforts for the cast of the main story. You're right. We can't bother with an fighting when our spotlight is so brief. Our scenario is already 40% done. This is going to be a long episode, but I enjoy this, folks. Good point. Who should we bully next? Mr. Yan's store is pretty close. Wait, what's with the look? We can't antagonize an old man. We'll show up on the news as an example of negative influence that foreigners have in Korea. Mr. Yan lives a respectable ascetic lifestyle. There's no way that he has any regrets about working long past the age of retirement. He said so himself, so it must be true. Ugh, now I feel bad. Please, to people that ship characters, I leave Mr. Yan alone. Leave Mr. Yan alone. His life is hard enough already. There's another minor character we can bother. Come on. Hmm. What do you think that is? Think is that... What do you think it is that Enoch Group does? The main story implies that Mr. Kim's explanation is vague because he assumes that Mach is an idiot. While he does actually think that Mr. Kim was also not being completely forthright. Uh, eh, excuse me, you can't just... Damn, he's not here. Well, it makes it easier to talk behind his back, at least. So where are the deals on Mr. Skinny T? Tie. Mr. Tie. Mr. Skinny Tie. Well, you don't find out... Don't you find out... Uh, don't you find it somewhat suspicious that he was trying to sponsor a team out of nowhere? And his wording at certain times was too particularly ominous. Wait, don't tell me. Yes, it's true. Mr. Kim will pressure Jet to match fix. That's a huge potential spoiler for the next game. You just ruined more sequential potential, you monster. These hints were there. I'm merely pointing them out. It's just a theory of mine anyway. What a bastard. Mr. Kim is killing esports. Do you think that he's the one that KP got involved with? The, the Kong is guilty until proven innocent, apparently. Well, putting that aside, how do you think Jet would react to that pressure? She's too honorable to give up her dignity for a few bucks. She'd get a job at Enoch to help her support the team before throwing matches. I guarantee it. Hmm, businesswoman Jet, the concept is undeniably appealing. Holding a clipboard, asking a patient, yet firm voice where TPS reports are. This is the ideal moment for more fan service. Sadly, we must use our imaginations instead. A crushing moment of defeat for everyone involved. We should escape this building before Enoch secretary before the Enoch secretary calls security on us. That's probably a good idea. Let's go and see Mock's apartment. People might get the wrong idea about our intentions, though. <laughs> Fine. There's no jail background in this game, so we're safe. Oh, jeez. Isn't it a little bit strange that both female and male mock have the same kind of room? Come on, there's plenty to complain about when there's, when it comes to cut corners, but that's a bit of a stretch. It's not like there's underwear lying on the floor or anything, something. Do a better job of hiding the disappointment in your voice next time. <laughs> Who do you think that picture is on is of on the bookshelf there? <laughs> hmm. It says it was a photo of Mock's parents at one point, but that there was before their relationship with them was changed in the script. Now it's a picture of Z Y Z Z. That seems less strangely fitting role model for a pro gamer than something made up on the spot for the sake of a joke. I'll try not to judge too harshly. Additionally, the poster in the background was supposed to be a generic K-pop styled poster. The producer had in mind a girls group, but instead they got a solo artist. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mach. Such pedestrian taste. I was hoping he'd appreciate the y and a YG aesthetic. Hold on, let's skip ahead a bit. How'd you do that? And wait, the clock in the background didn't change. It's still 9.38. The time must stand still in this room. 
It's only the light from the outside that changes. This is the writer's favorite background, a stark contrast from the PC bang, which was the producer's favorite. A dark and lonely room versus a bright and sultry one, both as places to play StarCraft, the difference in personalities is clear. It's pretty small here, but considering the location, it's not so bad. Better than Reva's Goshiwan, at least. What's the deal with Reva anyway? She's like the child of Rei and Idra. She grew up in the rural part of Korea with a computer as her only friend. She ranks as the poorest person on the team. Oh, that's sad. Perhaps we can avoid making jokes at her expense. Reva is the only person on the team who has a happy, stress-free relationship with her parents. They support her pro-gamer goals fully, even though they don't understand esports. Gah, ignorant bumpkins and the love of their only child. All pro-gamers should share their story of double lift. I don't understand her obsession with mech, on, though. It's a strategy that shifts that suits Reva's personality quite well. She and Artosis should work together to defend the sanctity of tank lines and double armories. Oh, will she also switch to a card game for children in the sequel? Cruel. So cruel. The entrance of the Namdan Park is across the street on the left. Do you think that most people caught that on their own? Maybe. From the park you can see Mox apartment building as well. Too bad that VSL Studio is too far away to see from here. Wasn't the actual GSL Studio on top of the floor a middle school at some point? Sun should have, have a ton of fans show up as matches. Oh my gosh. Back already, this area is probably one of the closest to a real location, that being the GSL studio before they moved to Gondnam. Hmm, the booth designs give away even though the lighting and the logo is slightly different. This is where all the regular season games are played throughout VSL. Around 50 people can fit comfortably in here. There are four booths that, not because of a 2v2 lounge, but so that players can adjust their settings and set up while a game is ongoing. It keeps things rolling or whatever. Tch. But where are the casters? The crowd? I'm all ready to roar. Ready or not. Ready to give... Hmm, no, I will maintain my composure. If the devs were brave, they'd put a song in the game instead of some randal, random alt. Cowards. Please. The nostalgia pandering is already close to a maximum. At this rate, our scene will be far too opaque for the weebs who have been conned into reading this far and don't know anything about StarCraft. Those fans have our appreciation for sticking out this long. Maybe we should do something to reward their patience. What? They already got a scene with Day 9? What a waste. If they don't know what StarCraft... If they don't know StarCraft, they wouldn't even know who he is. Such a squandered opportunity. The devs should have conned him into saying some absolutely epic memes. The enig fucking assholes named Prodox. Fuck those dudes, man. <laughs> Whoa, speak of the devil. Really laying cards out on the table there, aren't you, Mr. Nine? And we know what races Cat plays. <laughs> uh, where were we again? Helping out the newbies. Let's start. Let's start with the team dishwasher. That sounds like a nonsense insult to an outsider, doesn't it? I got this one. It's simple. There are chores to be done in the team house, which generally fall to the B teamers. Calling someone a dishwasher is the same as calling them a bench warmer. What? They should just hire a housekeeper. With that money? Sorry, I channeled Jet there for a moment. Her VSL champion status gives her a powerful aura in the studio. It says here that, it was, that there was originally supposed to be an attendant character to accompany Mr. Kim. She would ostensibly fulfill a role of a housekeeper, but would actually be there to keep an eye on the team and report their actions back to Enoch. That's too bad. This game is a visual novel after all. It's in desperate need of more women for lonely virgins to fawn over. <laughs> I 
no projecting. What? I'm just saying that everyone is already thinking, I mean, look at Bolt. The guy looks like he was constructed in a Fujoshi's workshop. I bet the Reva has ludes of him on her computer. About as sure of a bet that Stunt ran home, looked up the f photo shoot that Jet talked about at the bar. You know, Bolt's history with Jet was briefly addressed in the main game. There's a lot that Mach never learns about. They seem like they were cut from the same cloth. I bet they had a rivalry in middle school esports, in their middle school esports e club at least. Strange. The information on their relationship prior to the beginning of the game is all redacted. Well, it says that Jet asked for a longtime friend of hers on Shock for some replays who then ratted on her to Bolt. That's why she, he bought, brought the. Yeah, that's why he brought the thumb drive to Mach. Damn, betrayed. Well, wait, so she technically, she was technically the one that initiated the betrayal? So, whatever. Mach won, so it didn't matter. You could originally choose whether or not to give the replays back. Hell, I'd hung on to it for the free flash drive. Bolt's kind of a weird guy. Well, he's frustrated by the fact that Brood War is losing popularity. He pushes that frustration onto StarCraft 2 and the people playing it. How childish. What kind of miserable person would let their frustrations on the declining popularity of a video game affect those around them? But he plays StarCraft 2 in secret at the beginning of the game, right? Why is that? Probably because he's already thinking without jumping ship to SC2, he didn't want his team to know. <laughs> Either that, or he found the game fun. Wait, Bulk is starting to sound vaguely apologetic. He was a huge jerk to mock. We're supposed to hate him. He's really just another guy trying to make it in esports. You've already seen how tough it is for Jet's team. Imagine that, plus the fear of all the money in your game scene will be gone soon. Hmm, and I bet it seemed pretty unfair that a bunch of foreign investments went to StarCraft 2 rather than the game that built up in esports as we know it. Wow, I never thought about it like that. K-E-S-P, I mean K-P-G-A. Hmm, <laughs> guys have it rough. We should expect a Vegeta style con conversion at some point to unite against match, match fixing then. We said too much as is. Let's go to the team house to see before our time runs out. People that see this apartment as humble are sadly mistaken. Team houses are not really this nice most of this time. The trade-off is in size. The team recruits. If the team recruits any more players, people might mistake this place for a gold farming den. I'll bet that the fridge is stocked with Mox energy drinks. It's very diligent of him to support the companies that sponsor esports so selflessly. What's the layout of the team house anyway? It says here that there's two bedrooms, one for guys and one for girls. Hmm, I would have expected Jet to demand a room for, to herself, and it's too bad someone as laid back as a cell has to share a space with Stunt. Maybe it'll do the kid some good. A cell's an old hand at this stuff. It's unfortunate that a cell is looked is locked into the contract with Crash. He'd probably be the team's best player. Don't get ahead of yourself. I have the power rankings right here. Oh, dish it out. Who's the best? Skill ranking follows is as follows. Jet, Acel, Reva, Mach, Stunt. However, Stunt has a high amount of potential to move up if he improves his mindset. Damn, so if Bolt is Vegeta, then that means Jet is Goku? Acel is Piccolo, Stunt is Gohan, Reva is an android, and Mach, I'm sorry, but you're Yamaka. Yamcha. <laughs> Brutal. You couldn't even give him Krillin. We're going, we're giving it tasteless run for his money when it comes to references here. Alright. How are we going to wrap this up, boys? Anything you want to say to the fans out there? I have a direct message from the devs, actually. It says, thanks to our fans who waited patiently on release. We hoped that f we showed you a good visual novel. Please support us in the future. Fighting. 
I guess Mach really was a self-insert to a Korea boo after all. Oh, and at the bottom, and a special thank to all of you of our backers. The project would have not been possible without you. That's us. We did it, guys. We saved esports. Well, we saved SC2VN, at least. That about does it for us, then. It was a pleasure providing a poorly disguised developer commentary alongside you two. Likewise. Take care. Let's meet again before StarCraft 3 comes out, please. <laughs> oh. So, we just finally wrapped up the extra scene with the top backer characters, and they've gone through so many places with interesting things and some pretty boring things, but also just some fun facts here and there. I mean, as it said, it was a developer commentary uh, disguised as an extra thing, but honestly, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It had some new personalities and some more things to think about. I mean, the idea of a sequel hadn't even crossed my mind, but now that it has, I'm probably a little too hyped for it, but beyond that, I just think it's really great. So, other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this extra video, and I hope you all give more games like this a chance, because this is a great creation. Regardless of whether or not you thought the story was great, there's a lot of content here. And beyond that, I hope you all enjoyed what I'm making uh, of this, even if it's just presenting it. I'm glad to do that, because this is a good game. Anyway, if you like this extra video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to see what my next series is, will be. Series? Apostrophe S. Just apostrophe. Whatever that would be. But <laughs> beyond that, I hope you all have a good time. Take care of yourselves. And really take something from this. Because that's important. With that being said, this has been everything from SC2VN that I know of so far. And I hope you all do some digging and hopefully enjoy this game or something even reminiscently as positive as this experience for me has been. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next video, next series, and the next adventure. Toodles.